Hello guys and welcome back. In this tutorial, I will cover three important types of MySQL database server logs. These are very important log files. They will allow you to basically log all your database errors, your slow queries, and basically any other query that your database server runs. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all my latest training videos. Before we get started, I would like to note that you should probably not enable these logs on your production server. Enabling certain types of logs will have an increased overhead on your server and it will basically impact your server and its performance. I recommend you use these logs locally on your dev environment. It's useful for debugging and optimizations. I highly encourage you to turn it off once you're done especially the general query log. The general query log contains a record every time there is a connect and a disconnect request that runs on your database server. It also includes all the queries that your database server ran. There is two methods that you can use to turn on the general query logs. The first method that we will use will be through SQL and the second method will be um, using the configuration file for your MySQL database. For the SQL method, you don't need to restart your server. So you will just need to basically run these uh, three queries. The first one, set global general log off. So by default, your general log is always turned off. If you want to basically change the location for your log file, then you have to make sure that you have the general log turned off. So first step, set global general log to off, just in case. Then you will need to um, specify your log file location. For example, I am using Linux and I want to store my log file inside my log folder. So var log inside my SQL folder and I want to call it hello general log. Then I want to set the global general log to on. Let's go ahead and run this query. Once you run your query, let's go ahead and test it out. So I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to select a random database here that I created. And let's run a quick query. So let's say uh, select star from, I have a table called courses, so let's uh, run this query. Now, let's go to our server and uh, view the log file. If you guys remember, we changed the location of the log file using this uh, query here. So we want this file. Now, inside our server, we want to go to the location that we specified. So you can see I am inside my var log, my SQL folder. And let's go ahead and see if the file is generated. So you guys can see here, hello general log file. Let's go ahead and check what's inside. So, hello general log file. Now you can see here, this is our query that we just ran. So this is very useful when you have an application that you're running and you want to track all the queries that you're executing. The second method we could use is to directly modify our configuration file for our MySQL database server. So I'm just going to write the code here and then we'll copy it in there. So let's copy this and let's add it here. So we want to remove this and it's basically general log file equal. Let's remove these as well and the symbol. And we want to change the on to a one. So one for on, zero for off. Now the last piece that we need in here is to specify that this is for the server configuration. So in my SQL, you can do that by writing my SQL D. This will apply the configuration that we specified 
for our server so let's go ahead and copy this and let's go to our server what you want to do is you want to locate your configuration file location i am using ubuntu so mine is inside my etc folder inside my sql and in here it is called my cnf so let's go ahead and modify this file I'm going to go all the way to the end and I'm going to paste the code that we created. So now we will have to restart our server and we can easily do that by writing sudo service mysql restart. Once that's done, let's go ahead and give it a quick test. So I'm going to run that query again here. And let's go back to our terminal and let's go back into our log file and see what happened there so it was inside var log mysql and i called it um, hello general log and you can see here i just executed this uh, select star from courses This is a cool feature. As the name suggests, the slow query log basically consists of all the slow queries that run on your database. This is a great log file because you can use this information to find all the slow queries. Then later on, you can optimize those. Similar to what we did for the general log, we have two approaches to configure and to turn on the slow query log. We can do it by running a query or by configuring our database server configuration file. The query method doesn't require you to restart your server. For the query log method, it's quite simple. So first we want to set the global variable slow query log to off just to make sure that we're not running it. Because again, if you have this turned on, and you change the log file location, the change will not reflect. The second thing we want to do is we want to define the time in seconds. So this would be what is slow. So let's say, for example, we want to say one second, we want to log those. Or you could even say, for example, half a second. And now we want to set the log file and where we want to store it. So I'm using my var log, my SQL folder, and I called it slow query log file and let's not forget the log extension then our final step is to actually turn it on so let's go ahead and run this now to test this out we need to run a very slow sql query and i have an api endpoint that i built that basically runs a very complex uh, query that takes at least two to three seconds now i did also change the time to zero let's go ahead and run this and let's go to my endpoint here i'm gonna refresh the page and you can see it's taking a while to load now let's grab our file location and let's go back to our server now let's go ahead and check what's inside our log file we should have few records from that API endpoint that I called and you can see here there is a lot of queries that ran so it's a very bad uh, API endpoint so you can see here for example let's take a look here this is one of the queries that ran the select statement and um, here it specifies the time for this query and the number of rows sent and rows examined so this is very useful information once you guys want to start optimizing your api endpoints um, reducing those number of uh, calls um, usually you want to have as minimal as you can like one one query call for example per api endpoint is ideal but um, in this scenario for example i can see there's a lot of them
for the configuration file method, it's exactly the same as we did for the first log file. So I'm not going to go through it all just to save you guys some time, but I'm going to show you the syntax. So what you want to do is you want to erase the set global. And let's go ahead and change this to one. Remove the semicolon and let's remove the quotes. And let's add my SQLD to let the to basically specify the configuration for our server, not client. So you would paste this for uh, inside your configuration file and you will restart your server and you should have the same exact results as we did here. The error log contains information related to errors, warnings, and notes that occur during your server when it's uh, started or when it's shut down. It also includes errors, warnings, and notes that occur while your server is also running. Unfortunately, guys, the error log is not dynamic. So this means that to enable it and disable it, you only have one option, which is through the configuration file. It's very easy to do. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our server. And you want to modify your MySQL configuration file. In here, you want to go all the way to the end. And let's add our MySQLD command here. And what you want to do is set the log error variable equal to the location where you want to store this log file. Now, obviously, you could call this whatever you like. Let's save this. Then the last step would be to restart your server. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you found this tutorial useful, then please leave me a thumbs up, drop a comment, and uh, subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all my latest videos. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next video.